So the summer is approaching. We have the June solstice coming up on the 21st of June, 2023. And I always think that the, um, the solstice charts, the equinox charts, they set up um, a picture, they create a picture, a snapshot of the season ahead. So is it going to be a summer of sizzle? Are we going to be getting it on and enjoying some sunshine? Um, let's find out, shall we? So this is my solstice special for the June solstice 2023. I was going to say summer solstice, but obviously it's summer for the Northern Hemisphere and it's actually the winter solstice for people in the Southern Hemisphere. So I'm just going to call it the June solstice that um, I'm going to be looking at in terms of the coding, the themes, the patterns, things we might want to be aware of when we're considering the season ahead. Now, if this is the first um, visit of yours to my channel, welcome. I'm so pleased you found me. And um, please let me know in the comments how you found me because not many people do know me. So I'm very, very grateful to have you here. If this is a repeat visit, then welcome back. And thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's nice to have you back. So um, in this session, what I'm going to do is spend the first half of it uh, really talking about the solstice energy and how it's setting us up for the summer or winter, according to where you are, and what that might mean for you directly in your lives. Now, obviously, I don't know your birth chart, um, but <laughs> I'm going to make it as relevant as possible to humanity as a whole. Um, I really am sort of fascinated by some of the original patterns, you know, the first ones that jumped out at me when I've had a quick look at the chart. I haven't really studied it too much. I don't like to do that. Um, so I'm going to look at it sort of without anything, any of the accoutrements I like to put in, just the planets um, and Pluto, because Pluto has been declassified and there's a little bit of a controversy as to whether Pluto is accepted or not. I think he's got a big old chip on his shoulder, actually, bless him. Um, and then I will have a look at the chart with um, my usual um, favourite asteroids, which would be Juno, Pallas, Athena, Ceres, Vesta, and also Chiron. Um and then afterwards, I'm going to also look at what the solstice in the summer or winter means to you, according to your star sign. Now, if you know your ascendant, I, I would check out that one first. Um, I am going to index index these, they, they will be chapter by chapter. So just look at the star sign of the chapter that you're wanting. So for instance, if you've got Aries uh, rising or ascendant, you might choose to look at Aries. Or if you've got Aries sun, if you don't know your ascendant, um, sometimes it's quite useful to check out both of them. Uh, and there's a final resource as well that I think you might find quite useful if you really do like to look into astrology and all the inevitable patterns. And that is, I have um, a secret um, part of um this whole solstice programming. And I don't want to put it on this channel necessarily because I'm going to be using some lesser known asteroids, um, but it's um, uh, I'm putting it on my new school community page and the link will be below. Um, and it's a free community to join. So please, if you want to know um, how, for instance, asteroid Osiris, Borisisi, Chaos, uh, Amor, Shiva or Siva as it's known, um, and then also the centaur Silurus and also the Uranian um, point or planet Vulcanus. All of them are going to be squeezed into this solstice update, uh, my private one. So, yeah, we've got the basic one, the sort of astro astrological one that most people will be looking at, a slightly more in-depth version with some asteroids, then the horoscope-based ones and if you want to go even deeper for your summer or winter, according to your hemisphere, then check out the link below um, where you can find my sort of, um, yeah, my extra material. <laughs> so let's get cracking then. Let's have a good look at the chart. In fact, before I um, look at the solstice energy, what I like to do before usually is just to check out what's coming up, you know, like in the days leading to it. So for instance, um, we've got, I'm recording this on the 16th of June. So the solstice is still far, another five days away. We've got the new moon um, that's taking place on the 18th, the 18th of June, and that's in the sign of Gemini. Uh, so we've got the, the moon and the sun together at 26 degrees 43. Um, now, one of the, one of the patterns that I see with that leading into the start of summer or winter, uh, to the solstice energy, to our new season, Leading into that, we've got a couple of patterns that are pretty strong and also the new moon energy. So if we think about the solstice right from the get-go, 
it is with the waxing energy, you know, so we've got the new moon a couple of days before, three days before, and it's starting us on the way uh, on the waxing phase. So we're already in a phase of growth. So that's the first thing that we can really know about um, this uh, new season is that it's going to be one that has a lot of growth, a lot of expansion, a lot of new opportunities. Um, and it is going to set us straight in a new way. It's going to set us on a bit of a new path. Um, so I always think that's quite exciting. There's this really quite dynamic, um, I'm looking at a chart on another computer, there's really quite a dynamic um, grand trine energy between Pluto, Vesta and Ceres. Now there's some of, you know, Ceres and Vesta are asteroids I use in, I think, nearly every reading I do. But like Pluto is about, um, and they're all siblings in mythology, but Pluto is about um, the hell dimension we create for ourselves, controls, um, our need to um, be in charge, our need for certainty, um, and our fears that are playing out. We've got Vesta, which is about our sacred truth, like what do we really know and what can we feel in our guts? And then we've also got... Um, the quite steadying influence of Sarah's, which um, really gets us to know our inner nature. And it really speaks to us in terms of nurturing ourselves, nurturing our loved ones. And so there's this really strong and searching dynamic, I think, as we're going into the, into the new season. And that is we're facing our fears um, in terms of how we can look after our family and friends. Um, and how we can look after our families and friends by honoring our sacred truth. So I do think it's set on some really quite big principles. So for instance, to me, that's, that's, um, as I look at that, I think, wow, this is a time when we are either secure enough to face some of our darkest truths, or it's a time when, when our darkest fears come up. And we're left with nothing other than how do we protect ourselves? And we are like driven to our core. But seeing Pluto and Ceres and Vesta in a trine together, to me is saying that we can find some flow with it. So I'm actually seeing that some of the things maybe we've already identified as fears um, and concerns for us, we're now actually getting into a time of being ready. So we're coming into a time of readiness to move forwards. Um, and readiness to look after ourselves, readiness to go deeper, um, and very much to be linking it all to our core truths, what we absolutely know to be authentic us. So I think this season, as we go into it, is going to be very, very deep, very, very fast acting. There's also um, the lovely Uranus and Pluto trine, um, really showing that we can become more powerful the more we um, consider change, uh, you know, like when we're trying to hold on to things and we're resistant to change, nothing happens. But, you know, we realize actually there is a great power in the um, ability to flow and move and innovate and be really creative. So I really like that. Um, and then on the personal planet front, we've also got this very exact um, sextile at the time of the new moon between Mercury and Venus. Um, across the signs of Gemini and Leo. So there is this feeling that, you know, whilst we've got this, this interesting dynamic in the background, you know, our minds are super sharp, they're razor sharp and actually able to consider lots of many different threads and conflicting thoughts um, in quite a rational way. So, you know, the intuitive, sorry, it's fly season, if you can see that fly going around, we've got this very sort of intuitive um, coming into our freedom and our power and and looking at looking after each other and we've also got our rational brain working quite well but it's working very well with venus um and venus in the sign of leo is very warm very engaging um and and really quite um openly loving and and innocent and and quite joyful so uh, i i really like the look of this new moon i think it's going to bring about some change now what i'm going to do is bring up the actual solstice chart Right. So on the, the day of the solstice, so it's on Wednesday, the 21st of June, 2023, um, at 3.58 PM. That's, that's UK time, uh, Lisbon time. Um, now I, I set it for the, um, the sort of midpoint of the world. <laughs> um, 
Uh, it's mainly because I'm in this time zone as well. Um, but I'm not really considering the houses so much. What I'm really interested in is actually the patterns that come up with the planets. And the first thing that I really like about um, the solstice energy. So remember, this is how we're setting, how the season is setting itself, how the season is coming forwards, how it's arising. And um, we've got Saturn here down in the sign of Pisces. Now, Saturn's retrograde at the moment to be aware of the responsibility that we carry um, and also to kind of link the two together. Uh, to think about, okay, how can I use my personal energy in a way that is responsible, i.e. in a way that not only serves me, but serves the people around me. Now, I think at the start of, um, it's funny, a lot of my readings tend to go back to the the start of the pandemic phenomenon. Now, I, I, I really see that at the start of that phenomenon, people were coming into this idea of what was responsible and what was good and what was right. Now, some people did that by really following what they were told from authority, really following the narrative as it was shown to them. Some people, other people, really went into a place of inner responsibility um, by going inside and, and sort of really kind of checking in intuitively, which to rationalists might sound horrific that people might make judgments <laughs> based on their inner, inner emotions and in, intuitions. Um, and um, But irrespective, people, I think, were very, very responsible whether they chose to, um, you know, I think however people managed themselves, um, most people were in a place of wanting to do the right thing by by people and and in a way that went with their um, inner feelings. And so what we've got right now, I think, is actually the sort of connection um, and the realisation that um, the way that you did it, your particular way, isn't actually or wasn't actually the only way that you were being responsible. You know, I think for a long time there has been this feeling, and some of this isn't necessarily the chart, and this is also what's just like coming through me right now, um, cause I tend to be a bit of a channel. Um, for those of you that know my work, you'll know that. Um, but what's, what's really becoming evident to me is the whole, uh, idea of responsibility is that we're all responsible. We're all sharing this. And that's how we're starting this solstice with this, you know, this isn't just about you that's watching or you over there or you over there or, or me, you know, this, this is about the whole, picture of humanity so this is you know for the next season I, our ideas and drivers is to be as responsible as we can and to understand that we come from a collective that are all working responsibility responsibly whether you're ultra woke ultra conservative wherever you fit into um, the scheme of things um, it, it's time to trust that other people also have a different viewpoint and it's coming from their experience. It's coming from the wealth of their experience. It's coming from the wealth of their fears and how they play out. It's, it's coming from everything that this is actually all coming together now. Um, and it's interesting, you know, with um, Saturn in the sign of Pisces, uh, we can see where authority and our responsibility is a lot more maybe sustainable, a little bit more ethereal, a little bit more intuitive. Um, and if you want to know more about the energy of Saturn in Pisces, please do check out my um, Saturn in Pisces video, um, which is on my Saturn. Uh, I've got it in my Saturn playlist um, and somewhere on this channel anyway. Um, so yeah, that's, that's quite a, a strong energy. We've also, um, and I really, really like this, is we've got this conjunction um, or almost like a daisy chain. It's a bit of a, a stellium. So we've got We've got the moon at eight de degrees in the sign of Leo. That's really warm, you know. So as we're going into this season, um, the moon here is kind of demanding. <laughs> you know, the moon wants to have the best experience. The moon wants to come forwards. The moon doesn't want to be ignored anymore, doesn't want to be hidden anymore. And so, you know, if you think the moon represents our psyche, um, we have this inner desire. It's almost like our inner child. Leo is quite an innocent and playful sign. Um, it's one of the most creative signs. Um, it's traditionally linked to the fifth house, which is all about creativity. So the moon here is showing that like the human 
um, intention, the human psyche is really playful and really innocent and really, and really wanting to be seen. It's no more hiding. So if, you know, in the last few years, you've got used to hiding your thoughts and hiding, um, really what's going on for you is time to come out a little bit more. It's like the psyche is awakening and it's becoming quite passionate. It's coming quite excited, like excited about all these different new possibilities. Um, and the human psyche is coming into a creative flow. You know, the sign of Leo is very, very creative, very much using the passion and personal power. Now, the, as, as if you can get more creative than that, you've also got Venus in the sign of Leo, which is very colorful and um, sensual and textural. And, you know, it's, it's really quite loud and fun and, and quite, um, quite dramatic. I will be honest, like the human psyche is going to be a bit dramatic. Um, but the sun, uh, sorry, the moon and Venus mixed together in a conjunction is also deeply creative and deeply feminine. So I really do see there's this, um, kind of almost like someone's going, ta-da, but it's for the whole of the uh, whole of humanity. And like the sign of Leo is also very much about performance, um, like Hollywood, you know, it's like, it's like there is a great big performance going on and we've all got a part in it and we're all playing our part and we're all playing our part and we're singing our hearts out, you know, so it's really quite good. So I really see that as we're going into this season, not only are we starting to realize that actually we're all literally in this together um, and, and, and what, what, and, you know, you may well have realized that, you know, where people have been kind of separated um, previously in ideas of national sovereignty, you know, like I'm a Brit living in Portugal, you might be American, you might be watching me from India or wherever. Um, now we're realizing so much more that there's this very global picture. And actually, if we're connecting dots, um, which actually I think quite a responsible thing to do is to have a look outside and see what's going on as we're connecting dots many of us are actually in similar situations and so there is this beating heart <laughs> the moon in leo connected with venus really beating we are really wanting to come into our sovereignty we're really playing our part um at the top of our voices and and we are not holding back we are absolutely coming into a place of vulnerability um, we're being a lot more transparent than we've been for a really long time. So I, I, I see the collective human voice really speaking up. And then we've got Venus and uh, Mars together, which I really like because it brings together our love of harmony and our ability to flow and connect and be generous, open hearted um, and supportive. And it also gives us the fire in our belly to do it. It gives us the determination, the sense of vitality, the sense of health. And it's it's not really that we get too masculine or too feminine. It's like a, a, a blending. It's it's a, a really good balance point in the sign of Leo, which, like I said, is is dramatic. It's colourful. Um, you really can't hold on to things. Now, I've been doing um, a little bit of work behind the scenes, um, really thinking more in terms of subliminal healing and all those kinds of themes um for those that you know, know me you'll know that i'm also trained in um hypnotherapy and also nlp so a lot of that comes into my work so i've been thinking about like the collective the collective potential for people in terms of what's going on right now and actually i really do with all my heart believe that nearly every illness or dis-ease um what's underlying it is our trauma, the trauma that we haven't let go of, the trauma that we haven't um, shed, the trauma that we're too chicken to face, or actually we just don't have the skills. We don't even realize we need to face it. We don't realize that we're holding on to trauma in every part of our body um, or in parts of our body that are speaking to us. We have no idea. But what I see here with this lovely um you know, Moon, Venus, and um, Mars in the sign of Leo. I see that we've got the potential to almost like let this out. And you know, one of the reasons I'm sort of honing in on this is also that you know Mars and Venus are in this lovely trine to Chiron, which is the 
wounded healer, you know, Chiron is really, really very helpful for us to articulate our healing needs, not just emotional, um, but also physical um, and also psychological, spiritual, anywhere where we feel like there's a, almost like a, a, a healing itch that we can't scratch. Um, and it's of, often the thing that everyone else can see about us that we just can't see. Um, but it, it's like there is this awakening to the healing. But actually, we're going to do something about it. We're not going to sit on our backsides and numb ourselves with booze and and junk food and films or a Netflix super series, <laughs> like a binge watch. We're not going to do that anymore. Or we might do, but there is this extra Im impetus coming and an emphasis. And the great thing is, it's like good ideas and good feelings they catch it's like a wave and so i really do see that as we're going into this new solstice we have this wave of creative energy and there will be forerunners um and there will be people that come up behind a little bit slower to join this wave of healing um and creativity and passion um and you can expect it to come really i think from the fire signs first because they're going to be really feeling the energy as we're going into this season so th that's aries here and aries to be fair have been really worked on um you know having chiron in this sign for so long you know because if you've already had chiron go over your son um since 2017 you probably will have faced some of your darkest fears um and quite possibly had a bit of a um a dis-ease within yourself, within your body. Um, Aries is very much about the head. Um, so there's a, there's a lot going on there. And it's also a little bit accidental. And Chiron in the sign of Aries is actually about speaking up about our hurts. You know, we can't just sit back and hold on to them. So any old resentments and angers and um, blame and stuff like that has been coming out. And if you think about the media, you know, definitely since 2017, but I mean, definitely since, you know, 20. 2020, 2019, 2020, it's really been coming out as this kind of vile, this bile that's like boiling up and people have been really having at it on social media. Now, I really see that that's connecting now and we're getting a little bit a little bit easier, a little bit more used to just speaking a bit more plainly. So I see the fire signs and the air signs are going to lead this because this is also tied in with Mercury. 18 degrees in the sign of Gemini. That's really, really helpful. So we're talking about it. We're being creative about it. So I think um, everyone that's really in tune with their um, their psyche that are led by their intuitions first, um, I would say they will also, you know, if they're not an air sign or a fire sign, you know, they will be um, writing, making music. I don't know, but people are going to be letting this out and then slowly but surely the more cautious characters will be coming forwards because as we all rise up with this wave it's, it's bringing us all all boats rise with the same tide so yeah it's quite exciting stuff um at the time of the and this is good as well and it's it's one of the lesser known aspects but we've got we've got um the sun in uh, what's known as a quincunx um with um pluto and um, so th they're pretty much 150 degrees away from each other. And it really shows where there's a challenging energy. There's an energy that just can't quite be rectified. And if you think about the sign of Pluto, Pluto uh, the planet Pluto is about transformation, going deep, it's about our fears. Um, the fear that we have that, um, that we might be, I always think as, of Pluto as almost we're, we're afraid of being pulled under. We're afraid that there is a force that's more powerful than we can imagine and it's pulling at us and our very survival is at stake. Pluto represents death, the fear of death, the fear of being controlled, the fear of having no personal power. And, and it's, it's a huge energy. Um, and so all of those underlying fears that we may well have connected, uh, it's very, very much an unconscious thing. It very much speaks to the generation. It very much speaks to us through media. Um, and it's like a hypnosis. Pluto is very much um, associated with hypnotherapy and some of the, the dream state therapies and things that where we face our darkest fears. So Pluto is really there um, and it's connecting into the sun in quite a um, you know, an interesting way. It's not one of the common um, links, but it's 
it's almost exactly 150 degrees. It's a lovely bit of sacred geometry there. Um, and the sun is our personality. So this is, again, if we take it at the collective level, we have got this strange energy that's coming up where some of our darkest fears from the collective are coming up into the collective personality. And we don't know how we're going to rectify it. We don't know how we're going to integrate it. We don't know what we're going to do with it, in fact. Um, however, it's coming up anyway, and we are connected to it and we are sensing it. You know, it's not a direct threat. It's not like really obvious in the terms of what we might experience with a square or an opposition. This is subtle and it's coming up and it will, I think, um, increase as we get into the, into the, um, solstice, we will get that. It will build, you know, this is just setting the energy for the month ahead. Um, yeah, so they're they're the main headlines that I really like, um, and and I'm focused on. Now we've also got, and I'd be remiss to not mention this. <laughs> we've got the energy of Pluto and the Moon in opposition, which um, is interesting because um, you know we've got Pluto to do with manipulation, some fears and things, and control, and the Moon. Um, it represents our our psyche, but it also represents kids. Um, so it's our inner child. It could be physical kids. Uh, so I do think children are going to be a really strong theme in this season ahead. Um, it's innocence, you know? Um, and so we've got the innocence against or not against, but sort of the energy of innocence and playfulness represented by the moon in, in Leo, um, is in direct opposition to Pluto, which is, and it's in the sign of Capricorn just, but um, it's the energy of Pluto, um, the the big powers, the powers that be, the governments, the associations, everything that's really big and organized and powerful. Um, and it's, it's holding these kids, like in an opposition, there's this very strong feeling of tension. And, you know, the kids represented by, um, the, the moon in Leo is really giving the kids or the collective kids a big voice. So I expect to hear a lot more about children, um, in this season, um, in particular in the ways that they were controlled by Pluto or how big, big, powerful forces, um, outside of humanity, but part of humanity is like the things that are seeking to look after humanity or manage humanity or even dominate humanity. So that's big. And then there's this um, series of squares, which is also pretty big. <laughs> so um, Pluto, in fact, is in quite um, um, a, a tight square with the North Node. And the North Node is going to change signs during this period, during the season. We've got the North Node here. And if we had the South Node actually on this chart, it would be showing here in the sign of um, Scorpio in exact opposition. So we've got this, um, the North Nodes are representing the idea of uh, the karmic patterns, repeating karmic patterns, the cycles of life. And so currently we are right in the end of this very fixed um, period and it's in like an 18 month period and so we during the sign of Taurus we've been learning about security we've been learning about money um Taurus is traditionally the sign that's um associated with the second house which is all about investments um and our personal income about money if you if we're talking about a global level we're talking banking um, everything to do with security or the beginnings of security. If you think of the sign of Taurus, it's very rooted um, and it's very like you can't really you can't really push a bull over, can you? <laughs> you can't really uh, do much with him. Um, so it's very much about the markets and money and the nature of money and how that may have changed. Um, I also see that with Uranus having been in the sign of Taurus for quite some time and the rise of crypto. If you want want to listen about that i have got some uranus videos um specifically about uranus in sign of taurus um but anyway yeah the north node is moving from that area so we've been learning about security and the opposite which is where we once felt quite powerful you know with the south node in the sign of scorpio we would have once felt very empowered very very strong in our soul in our spirit and and we would know what was our right and wrong what was our black and white um and you know one of the things with taurus yes yeah, very firm but it's also very loving um 
And so it's almost like we've come out of this knowledge of where things were really black and white and where we knew what our power was and how to use our power. And we were, we could be quite scary if we needed to, and we couldn't really be hoodwinked because our eyes were open. Um, and collect Collectively, you know, where we are in modern times, actually, we've kind of walked into things, just thinking everything that is structured and everything that is in control is probably good for us and for our own benefit. And so we've been walking around in a bit of a daze, in a bit of a loving kind of daze. W meanwhile, the banks and um, money has been changing a lot. Our next 18 months, and I will be talking about this in um, my North Node and South Node uh, sort of 18 month forecast. Um, you can expect that soon. Um, but as that shifts um, within this season, collectively, we are really coming back to ourselves. You know, if we think about it, we've been really in a very social place for a long time. Um, and by social, I don't mean, yeah, we've all been out partying. Like in the last three years, we've been really like the whole idea of a social contract and the idea that we need social contracts and without social contracts in place, we're doomed and this, that and the other. You know, there have been ideas of collectivism, um, socialism, liberalism, all these isms that are designed to m create more equality and apparently more diversity. Um, and yet in spite of that, it feels like everybody is being evened out um, and homogenized somehow. Nationalities have been moved quite a bit. There's been a lot of movement, um, lots of influx um, um, immigration into different countries. Um, and there's been a very uncomfortable and deliberate blending. Um, I say deliberate, I'm a bit cynical. <laughs> I look at things and wonder what's going on behind it. Um and, and why it's always so many men that are being moved and shuffled around, but that's another story. Um, and so, yeah, we've, we've come out of this time of being really sort of balanced because it's for the good of people. If we don't do this, we're going to perish. And these are the stories that many of us have taken on board and lived our lives with these stories. And, and yet as the North Nose goes into the sign of Aries, it's time for us to, as humans and as individuals, like the sign of Aries is all about individuality. So we are going to be exploring our own individuality and how to reclaim that and how, and this is going to be the interesting thing because, you know, the North node is showing the direction we're going in and the South node is showing us actually that we have had those skills and we do know how to do it. And, and the South node in the sign of Libra is saying, we can remember what it's like to partner with people. We can know how and remember how to collaborate with people. We all have those skills there. And yet at the same time, we are being 100% encouraged to find our sovereignty and find our personal power. So isn't that interesting that, that it looks to me collectively like we are getting in touch with who we are and what we need as individuals and not losing sight of the fact that we are connected. But it's not that the connection is the big thing. The big thing is that we're exploring our creative potential and our ability to be present and, and to contribute on this plan, uh, planet, plane, whatever, um, you know, and within this big plan, um, whatever life is about. <laughs> So uh, that's um, a little bit of a breakdown of some of the themes that I see coming up with the main planets. Now, I want to go a little bit deeper. And so I'm going to have a look with some of my usual, actually, these ones are going to come later. Let me, I must have gone the wrong way. <laughs> yes. So these are my usual asteroids. Hopefully they'll come up now. Don't fail me. <laughs> Here we go. Right. So. So this is June solstice, and these are some of the usual. I've also got Lilith in there as well. Oh, and Eris. <laughs> so um, you'll see the charts got a bit busier. So there's a few more bodies in there. Um, and like I was talking about with the new moon chart, we've got Ceres here um, in that trine with Vesta and also Pluto. In fact, it's more, it's even more um, dynamic now. It's even more perfect. Um, it is almost an exact grand trine between Pluto, Vesta and Ceres. And if you remember what I said about that right at the start, um, I was saying that it's about, we realize we've got fears, we realize we may have been controlled. Maybe 
we're in a crisis point. Maybe we do need to come together. We need to look after each other and we need to do it by following our truth. And we need to trust that we're going to know exactly how we're going to do it. We need to remember. And so I do see this as being a collective remembering. And isn't it interesting, the word remember, like a what is a member? A member is an individual within a group. And so we are remembering, you know, we're not regrouping. So we're not like becoming part of the big group again. We are becoming a member of a group. Um, so I think our individual individuality is coming back and we are remaining within the group that is known as humanity. Um, so fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> from my perspective um some other things that i notice um with this let's just see um we've got we've got lilith um in a conjunction with mars now that ups the ante somewhat because <laughs> lilith really um she's a bit of a dark archetype for females um she represents a repressed voice um, a repressed femininity not so much repressed actually more she was cast out she was um, ignored, you know, she, and she was ignored because she was a woman. Um, but not just because she was a woman, because she represented something that was uncomfortable for people. And so you may know this if you're the black sheep in your family, or if you've been the black sheep or you've been bullied or whatever, you've probably carried that Lilith archetype with you. And, um, this is difficult, you know, so I do, I do see in, in this coming season that people who feel disenfranchised and who feel like they've been rejected, that there's something wrong with them, there's something different about them. I do think they're going to be coming more powerful in this season. And I, ironically, that's actually going to create more of an emphasis for us all to grow. Um, you know, w one question I would um, put to us all is to, you know, how, how can you engage with people that are disenfranchised in a way that brings them back into a group but still allows them to be themselves. You know, I, one thing I've observed and, and it's, it's caused some pain for me, I have to say, um, not physical pain, but like a, almost like, um, an exis existential crisis, um, around faith in humans is I, I have seen this very strong agenda on, um, how we talk about gender, how we talk about transitioning, how we talk about all these different things in particular with children. Um, and it feels like um, it has taken up a lot of our airwaves and that there's been put a lot of demands or mandates or rules or strong endorsements um, at, in such a way that has um, disadvantaged everybody else. Um, and it's a huge, huge subject. And obviously it, it also covers things like critical race theory and the idea of racism Um and then the very strong ideas and, and people who are watching might be saying, oh, well, you're just a, um, a, a white married cis chick. <laughs> you're just threatened. You're just triggered. And, and maybe, and, and if I am, um, I hold my hand up to it. But actually, I think there's a much bigger issue at stake. And I think, you know, um, if you, uh, I quite liked philosophy when I was growing up and I used to read um, I can't remember what it's called now and I reference it quite a bit, <laughs> the, uh, ah, maybe you can put in the comments what I'm talking about, but there's a theory about, um, a thesis an antithesis and then a synthesis dialectic theory. No, I, I can't remember what it's called or who, who did it. I do know the philosopher and his name's just escaped to me, but you know, we have, we have a, an original idea. The thesis is the starting point. And then an antithesis comes up in opposition and it creates a dynamic, which creates a moment to change. And it never goes back to the original point. It just goes to the middle point and that's the synthesis. And then the new synthesis becomes a thesis to which another antithesis occurs. And it's like the pendulum is always swinging. But what I really feel has happened um, in the last few years, and it's not just about gender politics or race politics, um, or even politics, politics. Um, I actually think there's been a deliberate force put in place to take the antithesis way out further than it should have naturally gone. It feels like 
it's been stoked up. It feels like somebody has poured some kind of inflammable substance onto the subject. So, you know, I, I've actually felt a lot of empathy and, and concern for people who may well be on their, their journeys and, um, you know, their life choices to do with gender because, you know, the story has been blown up so much that it might actually cause even more hostility or, or people saying, hang on, I don't understand that. Can we just have a conversation about it? You know, like when something goes completely to one side, um, it then causes another swing. So it feels like there was a natural swing. And then in the last, can't quite put my finger on it, but it, I think it's probably been a lot longer than we might visibly perceive and it's just been ramped up like someone's turned up the volume. But to me, it feels like um, there was a natural swing where people and humanity would have found their natural balance. And then there has been a forcing of a subject with a lot of inflammation. And I think people have been, I think, I think um, there are forces at play who have looked for disenfranchised people, people maybe who have questions because that's most of us. Um, and also, um, people who might seem vulnerable, people who maybe don't get support. Um, and I think a lot of people who are disenfranchised and not feeling part of the collective have been heavily, um, spoken to and, and, and influenced, I would say, um, because it just, and, and this is my intuition, not just like the planets that I'm seeing, but the, the sort of energy that I'm talking about, that there's been this push and it's gone outside the bounds of what feels like a natural push. And then another pushback comes the other way, or it appears to be coming. That's how it's being reported. Um, in fact, it doesn't matter where the push is. The synthesis is still right in the middle, <laughs> but it just feels like we've all gone on this really wonky ride, like we've lost our balance. And I really see that here with Lilith because the disenfranchised people that I'm talking about or the people who felt like a black sheep, the people that feel like they haven't fitted in, um, the people that have um, experienced racism or cultural differences or anything, in fact, like they might be poor in a wealthy neighborhood. You know, there's all sorts of ways that we're all different. And I think anyone that has felt different and disenfranchised um, could be speaking up in quite a big way. Um, and, and having Lilith and Mars together is quite concerning um, at this time. So, however, although I say that, like as it gets pushed one way, you know, there, there is an equal and opposite. So I do think humanity will come back into their own balance, um, but we may have to kick out those. Um, oh, I want us. I really wanted to swear, them, but I'm not going to. But we might need to um, get rid of some of the people that are sowing that those seeds of discontent, those people who are absolutely throwing kerosene and, and uh, chucking a match in and then just walking off um, with a little big smile on their face, you know, because they've set up a whole bunch of people to create a dynamic and they're walking away and rubbing their hands with glee, <sighs> warming their hands over that fire. Um, now, <laughs> It's funny because on the other side, we've got Eris, who's also another mightily peed off strong woman archetype. Now she is, she is about discord and she is absolutely gonna, um, sock it to anyone. You know, she, she is, she is absolutely wanting to have a ruck. Um, and she's going to do it on behalf of every woman, every, every victim, every this, that, and the other. I mean, she is the the spirit of, um, of bloody protests. She is the spirit of cruel murders that happen. Um, she's, she's the spirit of <clears throat> what we see as being false flags. Um, and she's connected. She's very close to Chiron and Chiron is our hurts and our wounds. So this is also something that we do need to watch out for. It's interesting. It didn't really come up you know, when you just look at the planets, but when you put in uh, a first line of um, asteroids, then you get a much bigger and more detailed picture. So yeah, it does seem like there are, I think, almost um, people that are quite rightly disgruntled and hurt and upset um, that they felt like they've been 
pushed out. And it's not just, um, I, I really want to emphasize that it's not just um, gender, race, wealth, nationality, um, and residency issues that that help you know, like push people out. You know, people during the time of the pandemic, um, with bunny ears, um, people during the time of the pandemic, you know, there were people who were pushed out by not following the agenda. There were people who were pushed out by not um, having these mandated jabs. There were people who were pushed out for not doing tests. There were people, anyone that was just living their life, but um, following what they knew in their heart to be true and keeping out of the fray were excluded. So exclusion is happening everywhere. Um, and it's not just the obvious areas where we've been told people have been excluded. Exclusion is happening everywhere. And so I really see Lilith in a conjunction with Mars. She's also in a conjunction with Venus. So, you know, she's hurt and yes, she's angry. And she also recognizes that she's part of something. And so she doesn't want to kick off too much. So I, I see that also happening. But then there is the Eris side um, of the people who've been so enraged, they've al almost gone mad, they've lost their mind. Um, and these were people who were very, very hurt and were probably quite damaged when they were spoken to or encouraged um, to, you know, w when they fell victim, really. Um, so I, 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 I see this as big. The great thing about this is there's this lovely sense of trines. So I do think the energy will flow and I do think we will be able to find our natural balance, but it's going to kick off. I do think, because we've also got this, um, you know, Mars and Lilith in a square to Uranus, um, things are going to get exciting, um, and quite terrifying. Um, I imagine, um, given that Uranus is also, um, in the sign of Taurus ruling banks and also cryptocurrency, um, and also with the node changes that are coming up and also Pluto changing signs. And we're at the time of the solstice, just after a new moon, all of those things I've just mentioned. Oh, and that Ceres is at zero degrees on an equinox point or yeah. So, um, zero degrees in the sign of Libra is an equinox point. Ceres and Pluto as sign changes. Um, and also this sun here, um, they, like when, when the seasons change, new moons, um, node changes, Pluto changing, Got someone trying to phone me. Oh, it's my husband. You know, he's going to have to wait. Um, all of these things correspond to changes in the market, um, in the financial markets. Like if you look at financial astrology, and I wish I had spent more time looking at it because I might have made a bit more money or made some money from it. Um, but market changes um, do come in alignment with um, what's going on on a planetary basis. Um, there are definite swings occurring with these times and clever people have studied it and coordinated it. Now, this is, you know, the fact that this is starting our season to me is indicating there's going to be a massive change in the markets. Um, not like what we've already seen, which it has gone very erratic and it looks like the US, um, well, you know, that debt ceiling just get, keeps on getting pushed up. <laughs> More money's being created out of thin air. How does that work? Um, lots of countries joining BRICS right now. It's not being heavily reported in the news. Lots of things going on. Um, I think this is the season that we're coming up to where they might, there really might be a major crash. So that's the uh, June solstice energy based on the planets and the main asteroids um, as I see it and how we came into that time um, from the new moon. Now, if you want to have uh, an even deeper look, um, which will look more into some of the more hidden um, concepts, um, then, you know, I'm going to be talking about the position of Osiris, the god of fertility and resurrection. I'm going to be talking about Boris Sisi, um, the sort of capacity for uh, faith, hope and healing oh. and conscious collective, the conscious collective illusion and um, delusion. <laughs> also chaos, the Greek god with the, you know, the Greek god who is at the origin of everything. Um, Amor, which is the god of love and harmony. That's nice and kind of benign. Shiva, the supreme lord, you know, uh, the creator of existence and glory and creativity. Silurus, um, 
that's not such a big meaning, but Volcanus, the sort of massive energy and potential brute force and regenerative nature. So there are some much bigger themes coming in um, to my hidden part. And like I said, if you go down into the bottom, you'll find a link and it will take you to school.com and my community there. Um, and that's where it is. And it's absolutely free to join the community. Please do. Um, you're not under any obligation at all. And there's also some weekly forecasts and daily forecasts that are going to be there. So please do go there, um, join up and you can see that extra bit of content. So now I'm going to have a look at the star signs, um, uh, bit by bit. Um, well, I just need to find, I've got quite scrappy notes as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so, and an even scrappier um, drawing to work from. So let's start with um, Libra. So, sorry, Aries. And um, as I as I go through this, remember you might find it easier to or more useful to look at the actual um, ascendant rather than the um, star sign. So if you like, for instance, my ascendant is the sign of Scorpio. My son is the sign of Sagittarius. I'll probably listen to both. I mean, obviously not me because I'm delivering them, but you know, you might choose to listen to your son and your ascendant, the ascendant being, I think more important, but it's all good. So Aries then, um, I'm going to talk about love, um, money, housing and, um, health. So in terms of Aries, one of the things about this um, this new season is you're coming out of a time where you've been really focusing on money and getting very, very resourceful. And you're going into a time which is a lot more about you as a person and what you're learning and who you are like in terms of your identity. In particular, I'm, I'm referencing the move um, from the, of the North Node from the sign of Taurus into the sign of Aries. So, yeah. Yeah, you are coming out of that place of, you know, identifying yourself because of what you do for a living and more as to who you really are, getting to the core of that, which is really, really vital. Now, in terms of love, I think you're going through quite a, a healing phase. And also, I think there's a possibility for new love. For instance, um, uh, there's a, a very strong emphasis on romance, new romance, this feeling of new excitement, this feeling of new creativity, which is all hitting your love sector, in particular with the position of Venus and Mars and the moon setting off this new season and the fact that there's a lovely trying to Chiron. So it feels like a healing, healing exchange. So it could, you know, be on the lookout. If you're a single Aries, look out for that energy. And if you are a um, happily married or happily partnered um, Aries, you may well find that that healing energy comes into your existing relationships and also that it's birthing something really quite new and quite exciting. Um so in terms of money, then um, you've got the North Node, you've got Jupiter and you've also got uh, Uranus going through the area to do with money in your life. So that's causing this kind of up, down, up, down, up, down energy where it feels like there's a lot of change. Um, there's definitely hopes of expansion, really big hopes for expansion and also um, this feeling of massive and quite sudden change it doesn't feel very certain and I really do think that you're looking for more certainty and actually you've just got to make do with what's what is and catch the rising waves of opportunities they come in so really go for it I mean you guys aren't very um, cautious as as a general rule so really jump on those opportunities as, as they come up in particular I would say April of next year is a big time for you to cash in on those opportunities so really get working on it there are some very big, um, big um, challenges coming to you in terms of authority and your reactions to authority. So that's the only thing that I would say would get in the way in terms of um, in terms of your earning potential is what your relationships with those in authority or become your own authority. In terms of the house. Um, it feels like it's quite warm um, in this next season. It feels like it's quite homely. It's, it, there's also fun at home. So the ruler of your um, typical house area is the moon. It's in the fifth house. It's, it's very much about you being creative at home. So it might be that you're saving some of your cash um, and being creative in how you use your home um, and also in terms of how you entertain more at home and are doing a lot more creativity at home so that, you know, you're not having to 
hemorrhage money at all. Um, I also see that in terms of health in this season, um, one of the things that's really going on for you, Aries, is that um, you're talking it out a lot more. It feels really important for your health and your vitality for you to really talk out what's going on for you um, in a way that's very, very transforming. I also think that when you're within your community, that's also got some health benefits too. Not too far away, just what is nice and quite homely um, in your local neighborhood. So I hope that's helpful in terms of understanding um, the season ahead. Um, so let's have a look at Taurus now. So the overall move for you Taurians in this season is you're coming out of this time of really being quite identified and knowing who you are, really feeling like, yeah, I've got to the core of who I am. Woohoo! <laughs> and that feeling of certainty in an actual fact, you're, you're going a little bit backwards on it. You, you're almost going a bit too deep. I think the big learning for you in this new season is that you're coming to a time of creating rock solid faith in yourself. And to do that, you're actually having to go into all of your blind spots. So I do see that um, with the North Node changing signs um, later on in this season, that you will be um, really looking at the inner critic and really looking at the inner enemy um, in your mind body system and your unconscious mind. So that is like an overall picture. But let's have a look now at um, love and money, houses, and also your health. So in terms of um, love in this um, in this season ahead, I actually think you're going into quite a chatty phase, into a phase whereby, um, whereby, yeah, <laughs> I'm just checking my notes, whereby there's a lot of people who are, um, interesting to you, but they're more people who are already healed and already quite doing well professionally, you know, so you're not really attracting people who are poor, you're not really attracting people who are um, in the dumps or depressed or anything like that. You're really upping your game. It feels like, um, it's interesting, like they say, or they, whoever this they is, there's the idea that who you surround yourself with um, really determines who you become. And so I really think you're mindful of that in terms of your love. And I think you're attracting a lot of people who've either got their money sorted, their life sorted, or a bit of both. So I think you're actually quite sensible um, and quite rational in, in love. I would say you can um, afford to not be quite so rational in your choices, Taurus, um, and, and really see what, what's going on. But that will have a real rise in, um, in your life. You, you're meeting people that you can be upwardly mobile with let's say. Now, in terms of money, uh, your business ideas are going from strength to strength um, and they're quite salesy. So one of the things about this season in particular is that you're getting used to selling the ideas of what's going on um, and how you can be of service and what your unique selling point is. Very, very salesy, very much not selling facts. You're selling the features of who you are. Um, you're quite mercurial. I would say Mercury has quite a lot to do with it. I also um, um, I, I also see that you need to break down your business into much smaller chunks um, it, or how you're working and how you're managing your finances. It, it will pay to do things in much shorter bursts. I know you guys have got a lot of endurance and um, like to go the long distance, but actually right now, shorter term investments, not, uh, I'm not a financial astrologer, by the way, but um, it appears to me that shorter attentions to things will ye yield better things in the long run for you. In terms of housing and how you're managing your home in this next season, I would say it's feeling quite warm and spicy. It's feeling quite creative. It's feeling quite relaxed. It's feeling very friendly, very inclusive. It feels just really nice. You're really entering a nice time at home. It's very creative. It's the hub of things. I will say it feels like you're pulling your neighborhood into your life, into your world. Um, it feels like you're the, the personality of your home or your family is becoming better known within your locality. So that's really nice. Um, and finally, in terms of your health, I really think your health is really int intricately linked to um, how you're living. So the, the happier you are at home in this season ahead, the more healthy you're going to be. 
um, absolutely m more so for you than any other sign. Um, in particular, um, it's important to get out and about in your local neighborhood um, because it's the connections that are keeping you healthy and also giving you the intel about what you need to know. Because if you think health is just about doctors, you're wrong. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's my opinion. You know, health is so much more than following the idea of, um, you know, we are just a, a lump of meat and science is everything about the body. We're talking about an overall health, which is, um, which is social. It's um, based on physical, spiritual um, and love and connection. And so the connection is actually the driving, th the driving force in your um, ability to recover and your ability to feel very grounded and well um, and allow that wellness to spread. So there you go. I hope that's helpful, Taurus, to you in your month, uh, in your season ahead. So, Gemini, for this season ahead, um, one of the things that I would say um, is really epitomizing the whole season is the gradual transition for you from um, having felt, you know, over the last 18 months, I think you've felt slightly less um, social, you felt slightly less um, vocal, slightly more hidden, slightly more like you've held back a little bit in terms of your thoughts and feelings and your views. And actually, as you go through this season, you're finding your voice again. You're finding yourself in a better tribe, a better class of people, um, or people who are more aligned to your spiritual, um, financial and communal values. You know, you're, you're finding your people, you're connecting with them again. So you can come out hiding. And I think that is one of the keys to this season ahead for you is this feeling that you're coming out of hiding and you're becoming your true self again, which I really love. I think that's great. Now, overall, in terms of love, um, there's a really, really big energy for you. Um, one, one of the things that I think really is showing up in terms of love for you is this um, Jupiter energy um, in the sign of uh, in, in the sign of Taurus, and it's really emphasizing that um, the more you love, the more you're getting, the more hopeful you are, the more optimistic you are, the more it's working. And because Jupiter at the time of this season change. Um, is in a conjunction with the North Node. It really feels like when you're excited and hopeful and and really wanting to grow your love and um, indulge in it, it really feels like you're actually on your karmic path. It feels like this is actually the time you were meant to be here. So I think it's all good. It's also quite exciting, you know, with Uranus as well. You know, Uranus is, is really saying, hold on to your hats. This love is slightly different to how it's been before. Um, you know, you are in quite an exciting stage. Um, yeah, watch this space is probably what I would say. Um, another thing that I would, would say in terms of, of love is, is also, um, that it's, it's really connected in with, um, how, how, um, how your health, I was going to come to health at the end. Um, but actually I'm, I'm going to come here now. So in, in terms of your health, I really see that um, you've got Mars energy going on at the moment, dragging you into your community and dragging you into people, dragging you into life, dragging you into old friends, dragging you into being the center of attention. And so that's playing quite, quite deeply. And Venus is there um, and the moon is there. So it's like your emotions, your heart, everything is kind of firing off when you're in this very social mood and when you're very much on your stomping ground. Um, you've also got this, um, interesting, um, expansion where you're realizing that some of the things that have held you back in terms of guilt, shame, blame, and anger, you're kind of letting go of those. It's like a time of no regrets. It's a time of, expanding, um, in a way that's quite adventurous. So I think the fact that your personal philosophy is, is taking you out, um, of your usual environment and creating a really nice health impact for you. And the fact that you're letting go of fears and regrets, regrets, like letting go of those regrets is expanding and creating an adventurousness of spirit. It's good. And it's also feeding into your love life. It's all very positive. Now, in terms of money, Gemini, um, I think it's a time when 
what you've wanted to create for yourself in terms of income is starting to come into reality. And the more you talk about it, the more you feel it in your heart, the more you're guided by your intuition, the more that's on the up and up. So that's all very good. I, I see that as being quite exciting. And in terms of houses um, and the way you live in your home in this in this season ahead, um, it's very much linked into having fun and communication. So, I mean, it's unsurprising really, Gemini, given that, you know, you are ruled by the sign of Mercury, that there is a lot of focus on, on um, communication. And also with the shift from the North Node from the 12th to the 11th, um, I really think you're coming back into that feeling of who you really are. Um, and that's glorious. Nobody can take that away from you. So enjoy the season ahead. Okay, Cancer. So, I think the overall perspective of um, what what this next season is about is really um, emphasised by the North Node change, and it's shifting from the area of networking and friendships and influence and co-creation, and it's moving more pointedly into a place of your career. So I really think that the friendship tokens or, or like all the goodwill that you've been banking on over these last couple of years is really coming into its own. And it's really bringing you to um, a sense of status. It's, it's bringing you into a new sense of status in a way that isn't really a Cancerian concern. You know, you guys are the good guys of the, of the Zodiac. Um, Sure, you get very peevish when you're challenged, but you really do have a kind heart uh, and are very easily hurt. And so it's interesting to see that your the emphasis of the the North Node and and the sort of karmic emphasis for you right now is to help you develop your voice and to develop your sense of career and where you're going, your sense of destiny. So that's that's a, a lovely um, move forwards for you in this month ahead. Uh, sorry, in this season ahead. Now, um, also, you've got the sun sort of waking up the first house for you. So it really does feel like your personality is coming forwards um, and that it's OK to really be who you are. You don't have to hide anymore. In terms of love, w the big thing um, I see in terms of love is that love is coming to you from afar or love is really expressed for you um, in terms of all that's outside of your usual experience. So I think that's wonderful that your love is is impacted by big thinking, big thoughts and um, a sense of adventure. It's, it's amazing. Um, in terms of money, um, the second house is really um, loaded with goodies. <laughs> it's loaded with fun. In terms of your sense of um, how your money comes in, it's really important that you just have fun, follow that sense of adventure in terms of money, it looks to me like um, generosity and flow and fun and um, short and punchy and kind of dramatic um, working really, really helps you. So where you can be entertaining, where you can, um, where you can um, dominate a little bit, where you can really show the strength of your personality. I think it's personality politics is really helping you in terms of coming forwards and having a, a real big impact on how you're earning your money. That's all really positive. I love that. And I think it's going to bring you joy. There's a sense of generosity. I think the more generous you are with your clients and the people you network with, the better off you're going to be. Um, and I think there is a sense of renewed determination, a sense of new v vitality, and it's really energizing your earnings. So I see that as being uniquely great for you in this um, current season. In terms of the house as well, I also think that um, your home gets much better because of your generosity to those that you're living with um, and your ability to be absolutely active with the people you love, being active at home, pottering, but pottering with a purpose and, and really putting your heart and soul back into the home. I think in recent times, you've stepped outside the, outside of the home a little bit, being a bit too busy, a little bit focused on things. Now it's really coming back. It's really coming back to who you really are. Um, and you're infusing it with a sense of drama, but it's creative and it's fun. It's, it's life, like life is coming back to your home. Uh, finally then in sense 
of health you know like how how is your health affected in this season what can you do to make it stronger i would say um the more you're connecting outside of your usual environment so you don't have to keep it too local you don't have to keep it too um too too much like what you normally do i see that more opportunities come from you venturing out not just outside of your usual environment but outside of your usual friendships um there are more um friendships coming your way more alliances there's a sense of a tribe there is a sense of you're with your people and it actually feels like it's quite fated so watch out for the people that suddenly arrive in your life and their sudden gifts and their sudden um new inventive ways of being this is all going to highlight how you can stay in in a much better health um and i think it's because your attitude is expecting it you know so these new people that are coming in are influencing you in such a great way that um yeah i think you're going to stay quite quite well and um and feel real good so that's you cancer i hope you have a great season um and yeah check in for more updates let's have a look at leo so um as you go into this season leo there's a lot of drama in your life for sure um you know the the season is set with the feeling of um the moon and venus and mars um, really highlighting your first house. It's all about your personality. I, I imagine this is going to be quite a big season in your life, um, whereby, um, your personality is, is, is coming on unfettered by your fear of what people think. So I really do think you're going to start playing it a bit hard and fast. I think you're going to be a little bit risque. I think you're not going to, talk yourself out of a good opportunity. I really think, um, Leo, that, um, your heart's going to be on your sleeve. You're going to love, um, openly and beautifully. Everyone's going to know what you think. Um, I think you're going to also feel quite dynamic. Um, yes, you might take up more space than everyone else. I'm not talking that you're overweight necessarily, but what I mean is you're taking more space with your big old ego. And yes, that is, you know, you can be a bit too much, you know, in this season, but do you know what? You're adding more to the collective than you're taking away. You know, there is a sense that what you give and how you radiate who you are. It's all to the benefit of, of humanity and your friends. Nobody's really, um, badly influenced by that. You know, everyone's coming off better off for having you in their lives and bringing your joy. So that is one of the biggest themes. And, um, you know, in terms of the karma, um, that you're going through, um, in terms of this, um, new season i would say the north node going from the 10th house into the ninth is great you know so where you've been focused on your career and your output and your status which are very like you know status is quite a leo thing um you know in specialness so where that's been going on you're actually now coming into a time where you can relax a little bit it feels like yeah people know who you are a little bit so it's it's playfulness so with all these this emphasis in your first house which is really fun and dramatic and colorful and whatnot you're also having an adventure and that's going to be taking you off for the next 18 months um and you'll hear more about that in my north node updates um in terms of um love then i think i think it's quite interesting um love is bringing up a lot of old baggage i would say in your desire to be more yourself that is creating um blame shame guilt anger and regret and all those kinds of things are coming up as topics you know you're not you're not going you're not staying in your relationship and not not saying anything you know if something is on your mind you're sharing it and it's bringing up stuff and that's good but it is a little bit shocking and it does bring out an intensity in your partners. So you might need to just watch out for that. I'm not saying you need to hold back. Please don't. We need your energy. Um, and it is bringing up um, a feeling of unrest. And yet it is also bringing up a kind of perfection. You're helping people to become um, proficient at managing their energy in relationships. And that is really, really important. You're doing us all a service. Now, in terms of houses and how you're living at the moment, I would say, um, um, I, I would, <laughs> I would say that 
yes, it, it can be quite dramatic. Um, I, I would also say it feels like you're changing quite a bit um, in terms of how you want to live um, and the practicalities. It might be that there's a little bit of conflict as to who has control in your home. Um, and I, I would say rather than um, look at it um, as you're doing everything together with your partner or the family that you live with, I would actually say it's more important to be practical and assign roles um, and responsibilities to each other. Have clearly defined boundaries, I think would make it much easier for you. Um, I think it's very easy to, to hide at home um, and I also think it's quite easy for things to um, devolve at home and it becomes a bit of a free-for-all so I think the more the more clear you can be with your boundaries the better off you'll be um, now in terms of health um, obviously it's a quite a lot of changes I'm talking about and you know you are really in your personality in this season in terms of your health I, I think the more you let go of regret and guilt and shame and some of those very um, disabling um, energies that we have in our life, um, I would say your health will do so much better for it. So what I'm really seeing is you're dissolving old patterns. Um, and as you're doing that, you're just feeling so much more magnificent and so much more yourself. So there you go, Leo. I hope that was helpful. Have a great season ahead. So Virgo, um, wow, there's, there's quite a lot of stuff going on here. Um, the karmic shift for you that's happening as the north node moves from the ninth to the eighth house and um, from the sign of taurus to the sign of aries that's going to be shifting you from a place where you've been really kind of exploring new ideas new concepts and um you've learned quite a lot i would say in terms of spirituality and um politics and um the law and all sorts of things um i think you've got a much greater understanding of how the, the world works and how people fit together and stuff. And actually, I think you're going to be putting it to much better use over the coming months and the coming 18, 18 months in particular. Um, so you're, you're applying it like there's a bit of purpose there, you know, that you're going to use what you've learned to unpack things and try and create a better feeling at home or within your family within your close relationships so that feels like quite a strong thing that's that's happening right now um now in terms of love for this uh season it's interesting there's some your partners are quite intense right now and they're also not very clear so they're intense and possibly moody possibly not that easy to please and, you know, when you're asking them, so love, what would you like? <laughs> it's coming out as gibberish. It's like, well, if you loved me, you would know. So I would say give up. You know, I'm not saying um, to, to like separate or anything like that. But what I'm saying is you probably need to just let your partner be a little bit, support them as much as you can, but don't fall into the drama that they're bringing into your lives. Let them have it. It's their responsibility. You can have a few boundaries. It's time for you to have a bit of a party, you know, get your best clothes on, go out for a bit of a, a party and see if you can rise them up with your tide. Like if they see you having fun and enjoying yourself, maybe they'll come and join you. If they're not, then maybe um, there is something else to be looking at in your relationships. It can also be a time when there's an increasing feeling of the need for stability. Um, and again, what is feeding into that is the fact that partners do seem less articulate. They're, they're slightly confusing in the way they're talking. I would not take that to heart, but I would look at where you might be projecting that on them. So have a good look and see are you being clear about what's going on for you emotionally? Because anywhere where you're not, that's being reflected in your relationship. So I hope that's helpful. Now, in terms of money, Virgo, there's, um, I think there's a lot of um, benefits to go with your dreams and your imagination. I think a lot of the things that are coming into play right now um, 
are coming from that sense of your private thoughts. Like what have you held in your private thoughts as an opportunity for something that you want to manifest in your life? So it's that time when those old dreams from the past can be revisited. It might be that you do something like I do once in a while. I go through my cupboards and I find a whole bunch of notebooks. I don't ever finish one notebook with ideas because for some reason or another, um, I've got all my ideas scattered around, but you get them all together and you're looking, you're like, wow, where did that idea go? And so all of a sudden there's this resurrection and resurrection is a good word for it because, um, it does feel like, um, in terms of money, there's some old ideas that maybe you, um, put to rest and all of a sudden they're really relevant and actually they're really right now. I also think there is um, a sense that something to do with how you earn money seems to be a little bit in the dark, um, almost like there's um, a bit of a blind spot about it. Um, and you could get emotional about it, but I would only recommend you get emotional about it if you're going to sit down with a pen and paper and kind of draw it out, map it out. If you've got somebody around you who's a really good coach, or if you can find some good coaching resources in terms of managing your money and your attitudes, your unconscious attitudes to money, I really think you can get into the nub of it. And I think you can turn it around. So there you go. It's almost like you're reprogramming your money mind. In terms of how you're living at home, I think it's all good, really. Things are expanding. It almost feels like your home either needs to get bigger or there's more people coming to live in your home. Uh, suffice to say, there's a new kind of energy. Um, it might be that you're bringing um, a sense of something unusual, something outside of your usual cultural reference into your home, like you're redesigning it. But whatever's going on, it's important that you always feel elevated. You always feel like you're expanding um, in your home, and that will really stand you in good stead. Last of all, then, in terms of health, I think this is one to watch. Um, I think it's interesting for you to um, have adventures, and I also think you need to watch. Um, I, I think I think when you're outside of your usual environment, outside of your usual sense of who you are, what you know, etc., I think it's very easy for you to pick up on outside influences that could um, lead you astray. Now, Virgos are quite meticulous about their health um, in general. Now, I, okay, that's a bit of a generalization, but they are known for being a little bit pedantic and a little bit worried. Oh, you know, what am I doing? So watch your spiritual energy, watch your feelings of like your psychic boundaries. Definitely watch that to make sure you don't pick up something that's just trying to kind of suck the life out of you a little bit. Um, and, and also watch out for the purity of the things that you're taking into your world, um, aside from food and water, but the energies really be around people that help to nourish you. So anyway, that's you Virgo for the next season ahead. I hope that's helpful. Okay, Libra. So one of the things I think is going to really highlight um, what this season is, is the fact that the North Node um, throughout the season is moving from the 8th house to this 7th area for you. So I would say in the last um, 18 months has been very much about um, understanding what's working for you and what's not and where you felt guilted and shamed and where you've had to let go of things. There's probably been quite a few things that you've had to let go of that just haven't really worked for you. There's been a lot of life changes. And as you move, um, as the North node moves um, in relationship to your set point, what I'm really getting is that you're moving into a time of better communion, um, more relationship connection. Um, and I see that being really good. So that's the first thing. Now, in terms of love, <laughs> having just said that it's moving into um, um, your opposing sign, which is um, the sign of Aries. Now, in terms of love, you've got Chiron in Aries, which has been there for a really, really long time. But let's talk about love, you know, because, you know, Venus um, is in a conjunction with um, the moon and also Mars as we go into this season. And that's actually um, in showing up in the part of friendships and networks and connections Um that really take you on a journey of what you really like doing and how you really like to enjoy yourself. So I think in spite of the fact that you've learned a lot in terms of um, partnership and boundaries and where um, things work for you and where they don't and um, guilt, shame, blame and anger and all that jazz, 
Um, I actually think the best way to manage your love in this season ahead is to do more things with the people that you like in terms of the real hobbies and where you're creating something with other people. I think that's really strong. It brings in love if you're single and it enhances love where you're not. So, you know, if you are in a relationship, get a project, get something that you can do together. Now, in terms of money, um, there's a lot of emphasis um, around the um, place of creation. I really think, I mean, you're a creative person anyway. All Librans are very, very creative and quite artistic and quite stylish. Um, and, um, and you've got a good sense of proportion and balance as well, which is really nice. Now, I do see the need for creativity to come out in terms of your earning potential. It really feels like um, without it, um, your earnings um, could really suffer. So you do need to have a more of a creative approach in this season. Also collaboration. <clears throat> so a little bit like what I was sharing in terms of um, how you can enha enhance love, you know, on some kind of communal project. I actually think in terms of um, money as well, the more you invest in a collective project, the more you invest your time and energy into that, the easier your money situation gets. So that's my top tip. Um, in terms of houses and, and how you might live with your family or however you live, um, I would say it feels like there's quite a lot of stuff going on um, at home. It feels like there's some restructuring. It feels like it's a little bit hard work. It's not the easiest season in terms of feeling grounded However, you are getting more and more organized. You're getting more streamlined in your systems. You're managing your money so much better in terms of the flows in and out of the house. So I do think this is actually quite a useful um, period of time for you. To me, you know, as, I, as I'm sharing all that, it feels like you're growing up. Um, now, I don't know how old you are, um, and you probably already feel like you are, are grown up. I also think um, it, you are also going through um, symptoms to do with life changes, to do with um, the rites of passage that are going on for you right now. So, you know, if, if you think about it, like we're, we're born, we become toddlers, we become less reliant on our parents, we grow, we go through puberty, you know, and there's all these very definite stages and with each of those definite stages, there are definite patterns towards health and different things that we might be doing to, to do with our developmental stage that can impact our health. So I think anything health related is also related to the stage that you're in as well. So I hope that's helpful, Le uh, Libra, um, and I hope you enjoy your season ahead. OK, so Scorpio, let's have a look at your um, upcoming season. Um, the first thing I wanted to say sort of in general is that um, the North Node, which is changing midway through the season, um, is transitioning right now out of the sign of Taurus and into the sign of, of um, Aries. Now, as it does that, it's really taking the emphasis from partnerships. Um, and actually, the type of energy that you're moving towards, the, the sort of understanding, I guess, that's coming up for you in this in this next iteration is to learn more about responsibility on a day-to-day -day level. So it does feel like any kind of responsibility you've got becomes a lot more real. Um, there's a lot more to sort out with it. Um, old patterns repeating themselves. So I would absolutely say as you go through this season, there's a real sense of um, completion as you're clearing one thing, clearing another thing, clearing another thing. Um, I think you, have, you are going to have to be quite organized. So there's definitely a shift. And um, I would say if you're having to be more organized at some level, it's because you're taking full responsibility for your life. That's great, right? <laughs> so um, aside from that, um, you've got two rulers. <laughs> now, Pluto is in between signs um, where it's kind of in, ca um, in Capricorn um, and it's it, and it will be going back into Aquarius. But, you know, essentially... Um, in terms of how controlled you feel in your life right now, it really feels like, um, you know, how can you feel controlled and settled and that sense of belonging in your community? And how can you get that sense of being at home? So I think these are endless questions that are going around in loops. But at the same time, there's this feeling of an exciting new dynamic in terms of your career and your status. And they may well end up answering the question for you according to how well that goes. Now, in terms of love, 
which seems to be, I think, the the thing that most people want to know about. Um, I would say um, in recent times, it's felt very, very um, karmic. Um, there's a lovely expansion. There's a lovely way that you're blasting through old stuff. It just feels like there can be hope and optimism. But when something comes up, boy, does it come up. And oh my God, it can get messy and explosive. However, there is this feeling of completion. There is this feeling that you're really blasting through old stuff and, and it leads to much more harmony. And I would also um, add to that that there is also a feeling that you and your partner can do so much more and you can do stuff together and raise your collective game. So that feels lovely. Now, money, um, money opportunities are also showing up, I think, through partnerships and also your home is also, this is actually all about partnerships apart from health, which I'll talk about in a sec, but your money is getting better when you're expanding through your partnerships and working together with your partner um, or people that are in your life. To me, it feels like they've got ideas or in your communications, if you have little meetings, have a little coffees and things like that, that's where there's a source, uh, there's almost like this generative energy that pays you back somehow. You know, there's a little nugget that comes from a nearest and dearest that really helps you. Um, also in terms of the house and how you live, um, there's disruption that comes from the people that you love. You know, they're offering a certain disruptive, dis-ease kind of energy that comes in. So again, if you're not feeling very stable at home, it could be very easy to project it onto the people living with you. Um, be very cautious of doing that because it could be something that you're projecting on them as well. Usually these projections work both ways. So ask yourself, what are you doing to um, create that discord and change and ask yourself, is it needed? It might be. Um, finally, in terms of health, um, I think the dynamics are burnout. That's that's the thing. So don't burn out. <laughs> um, watch where you're being unkind to yourself in terms of what you're talking about in your body um, and watch your energy levels in terms of giving too much to your job. They are the areas where you can actually claim back and feel much, much stronger. So I hope that was helpful to you, Scorpio. So Sagittarius, um, let's have a look at your new season. So the first thing I would say is the season that you're going in at the moment, going through, um, the North Node's obviously going to change signs during that time from the sign of Taurus into Aries. And how that's affecting you is it's taking away some of the emphasis of the drudgery of life. So I think over the last couple of years, um, there has been this feeling of, Oh, just trying to catch your breath, just trying to catch up with all of the tasks and things that have been going on. And it is probably felt quite relentless. You know, it's been ongoing, like nonstop. Um, so take heart as you're going through the season, the transition is bringing you back into actually what you want to do. It's bringing you back into your passions. So the first thing about this season, I think for you is that the sum total of it is to remind you of what's important and how you best thrive. So I, I love that. I think that's great. Now, um, your ruler um, is also helping you in terms of where things have felt a bit drudgy. Um, so things are speeding up. So where you may have found that, you know, it's taken um, a year and a day to get anything done, all of a sudden there's a, there's a step forwards. So where you've been struggling before, it's now getting easier. That's good. In terms of love, um, I would say it's all about communication. Everything is about communication in this season. Um, and it, it's going to create changes. Um, it's going to make things much faster. So again, there's another mention of speed in terms of this new season for you. Um, but I just think it's, it's in terms of you, Sagittarian, it, it's important to create lots of little trips, lots of little experiences, break it down and talk, 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 talk. Um, the more you can do that, I think the more you can start to relax into your relationships. Um, I think, you know, your focus on all the drudgy stuff um, for such a long time is actually taking you outside of that seed of joy. So you need to look at life um, with your partner, almost like a child that goes from thing to thing or like a butterfly from flower to flower. Uh, in terms of money, um, 
it's all really tied into the way you're living at home. Um, I think they're going hand in hand. So I'm going to read them together, in fact. Um, so uh, first of all, you need to make sure you've got enough coming in um, and you need to be in a stable home because if you're not feeling stable in your home, your earnings are not going to get stable. So I think you need to do everything that you can um, in an affordable way so that you feel very grounded and so that you know who you are and you know what's what, you know where everything is. So it's really important to... Um, streamline everything to make your life easier so that when you are at work, everything goes just as it's meant to go. Um, it also could indicate that your income is coming from working at home too. Um, also, um, it feels like you are going back into um, revisiting actually how you work and deciding if you need to have greater control over it. So um, I think there are some extra things that you've forgotten about that you're going to just go back, look at, put it right, and, and then start moving forwards again, which is great. It's it's really going to help you. Uh, last of all, then, the house, uh, or almost last of all. Sorry, <laughs> I've got health as well. But in, the, in terms of the house, um, I think it could be quite exhausting. But like I say, it has just got easier as your ruling sign, which is Jupiter, has gone into sixth house. So a lot of the old drudge has got a bit easier. Um, but there is still this unbounded kind of dreaminess um, that exists in your home, which can also show up as mishaps and accidents and forgetting to turn the gas off and running out of things. So I think you do need to be a little bit more um, careful with your resources and really watch them and watch the patterns. I think the important thing is you need to get specific about it. So really everything to do with the home is in terms of managing it. And again, you might need to be specific with the people that you're living with. It might just be that the resources that you've got living, the, the resources in your life are actually the people that you live with. You know, they are the source of your happiness, for instance, or the source of your upset. Um, but yeah, I think it's time to get very specific about things, which isn't very much a Sagittarian thing, but it will stand you in good stead. Hey Capricorn. So um, in terms of this season ahead, um, the first thing I would say is the energy of the North Node changing signs uh, midway through this season is going to change the emphasis of it. Um, and it's you're saying goodbye to this time of where you've been actually quite creative and learning very much to let go of the things that you're creating um, and to enjoy the process of creation in a much deeper way. Um, I think in in previous times you've been quite controlling about um, how you use your energy. So you've been a lot more free flowing. Life has actually been that experience, which has been quite helpful. And you're moving into a time of taking that creativity and playfulness and innocence into your home, which feels really lovely. Um, so the next real focus of attention is on your home and how you can make it a place that feels a lot more warm and a lot more inviting. Now, um, in terms of this season ahead, um, love is is actually really quite lovely. Um, so um, it feels like you can really be the person that you want to be in terms of your relationship and you really get to know the partners that you're with. It really feels like their personality comes out and there's a lovely sort of um, way of understanding each other. It also feels, I think, that um, your emotions are so much stronger than usual. It really feels like in the season in particular and the way it's reset itself is that um, – you're very real and you're very vulnerable with your partner. And that's an unusual thing for you. You know, you, you don't tend to give it all up straight away. You tend to fight for your right to protect yourself. But actually I see some of these protections are coming down and actually it's serving you. It's actually creating a much deeper level of intimacy and much better sex and um, sensuality. So bring it on Capricorn. Um, in terms of money, um, I think the more creative, but not just creative, but the more new and inventive and um, open to surprise and spontaneity you can be, the more the money is coming in. It's really important for you to um, check in with inventive people. You know, if there's an aspect of your work that is inventive and surprising and chaotic, it then incorporate it as much as you can or partner up with people that offer that kind of energy. Um, 
I also think it's important the more you can communicate during this time, the more likely your earnings can go up. So I see that as being vital. So um, again, there's a, a kind of different Capricorn energy coming out than the one that we all know and love. Um, now, in terms of Capricorns and the house and how you live at home and stuff, um, it's it's creating a lot of uh, of, of new feeling and with that new feeling comes the inevitable vulnerability and that inevitable challenge of, uh, okay, yes, I gave the opportunity to be vulnerable. Now I don't like it. It feels a bit too, feels a bit too personal. It feels a bit too pointed. Yikes. What have I done? Um, and it's creating change and change is never that comfortable for you. So, um, I do think by the end of the season, the way you're living will be transformed. I do think it will be a lot more real. It might involve a little bit of discomfort um, and it's worth it. So I can see you actually structurally doing something at home or it might be that your relationships as you're going into them in a much more open hearted and equal way. I think um, that's going to transform the way you are at home as well. So I think that's all good. Uh, last thing that I would share with you then, um, Capricorn is that in terms of health, um, it's all about being too busy. Um, I think busyness is is important and connecting to people is important. Like, um, you know, being busy because there's lots going on and keeping track and, and enjoying the flow of being super busy and organized. I think that's really helpful. But I also think you could be busy for busy sake. Don't do that. Um, the moment you do that, you're sabotaging all of that lovely vulnerability um, and intimacy that you've built up with other people and with yourself. So don't allow yourself to be too busy. You need to stop every day, take a moment um, and connect in to what is important. So anyway, Capricorn, I really hope you have a lovely new season and um, check in another time. Okay, so Aquarius. Um the big thing for Aquarians, um, in terms of the karmic energy, um, the North Node changing signs um, throughout the period of this season, is that the old way of doing things, I think you've been challenged quite a bit in terms of what home is to you, how home shows up. Um, I think there's been probably a lot of challenges within your family, possibly on your mum's side. Um, it just feels like there's a lot of things that have come up um, for recognition. A lot of things from the past, I would say, um, quite possibly in quite a surprising way. Now, over the next 18 months or so, you're being drawn back further into your community. Really what's going on is it's time to recognize the importance of being in a community and how now stuff from the past has come up um, that you're able to connect much more fully with your neighbours and your cousins and siblings and things like that. So I do see it's it's actually quite a useful thing, um, and actually I think it will be a lot a lot more fun. I think you're going into a fun time of lovely connections, so that's all really good. Now, um, as this is also going on, um, we've got this lovely love energy. Um, that is really quite fun because <laughs> you've got um, the moon, you've got Venus and Mars in the seventh house and the sun in the sixth. So I think you're quite busy with your loved ones. You're quite organized with them and they're quite dramatic. And it really does feel like they're really dramatic. And you know, one of the things you like to, um, one of your virtues, I think, is to not be too personalized, to not be too attached and to try and be a bit cool and a bit low key. And your partners are pulling you into some really strong reactions. And that's good. It's it's passionate. It's fun. And, you know, you got to hold on to your hats a little bit in terms of love. So, you know, when you're judging them um, as being slightly less than you because they're not, they're too attached to outcomes and things like that, I think that's your key and cue to go, okay, hang on a sec. I do need some of their drama. I do need some of their color. I do need some of their passion. And just dive right in. You know, it's time to not be so unattached. Just let it, let it happen. Uh, really get involved. In terms of money, um, what I really see going on is um, certain things are being ring fenced, um, and there is this growing sense that more and more of your money that you're earning 
um, is kind of being tied up in things, which is a bit scary. But there's also a really strong creative spirit and urge for you to still be quite free. So my question to you, Aquarius, is how can you feel free um, even though your money might be tied up in things? And I would also say um, that Jupiter is showing up um, in your fourth, like well, in the sign of Taurus, is encouraging you to invest in home or in houses or um, look for something um, in your home environment that is actually um, a resource that you can exploit or use. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, putting your kids to work or anything else, unless they're of working age. Um, you know, I, I'm not talking about sort of exploiting, but I'm I'm talking about making good use of the resources. So it might be that, you know, it's not about making good resources for your home, but maybe you're in the wrong home and you need to move closer to where you work, or maybe you're going to come and work from home. But I just think home is one of the keys to managing your money so much more effectively. Now, in terms of the home, seeing as I've mentioned it, it does feel like there's more compatibility at home. It does feel like there there's more love, more energy at home. It, it feels like um, you're learning a lot at the moment and, and it feels really quite nice. I also see um, that there are still changes going on. And I think that's because as the people that you're living with are getting a bit more dramatic and a little bit more real and authentic, it's bringing out some truth about how you're living and like how the house is carved up. You know, it's, it's funny, like, People have their bedrooms, but that nowadays people have their offices, people have their bathrooms or their cupboards or this, that, and the other. So I think there's a lot to do with sharing, but also um, independence. Like, how do you get that space in your home when you're living with other people? So it's interesting. It, it's a, a situation of greater intimacy, but also a greater need for space too. Finally, in terms of health, um, I really do think that the intimacy that you're getting with your partners is very, very healing. And um, it is also reminding you of how you're organizing your life and that now maybe you need to organize your life, not so much so it suits the house and the rhythm, but more so it suits you as an individual and also the individuals that you're living with. So it's it's less about being functional and um, following the rationality of things. And it's much more about your emotions and your feelings. So I think this season ahead, Aquarius, is really pulling you back into your body. So I hope it's a good month, uh, a, a good season for you. Take care. Pisces. Ah, oh, here we are. This is the last one, um, but by no means least. Oh, well, the first thing I see um, in terms of this, um, this, this season ahead is that the North Node is changing from the sign of Aries, uh, sorry, it's from the sign of Taurus into the sign of Aries. And that's creating a new dynamic for you. So like in the last 18 months, it's all been about the community and what you've learned from the community, the communal spaces, the communal responsibilities, social contracts, and all those kinds of things. It's been a lot going on, um, possibly stuff with siblings and, you know, your old neighborhoods, your old stomping grounds and stuff. And actually in this next 18 month period, it feels like you've learned a lot. You've um, got a lot of cues as to how to improve your sense of earning, your sense of values. Now, what I'm really getting as, uh, at is that this is the time to start valuing yourself and your contributions in a much better way. And so I do think that as you've spent more time seeing how other people do it, it's really um, sunk in and, and that's your next challenge, I see. Um, now, in terms of love in this um, season ahead, um, it's all based around communication and communication at home. Um, so I think you're bringing love home, first of all. Um, if if um, love is new to you, <laughs> that is hopefully, um, if you're already in a loving relationship, love and communication is already happening at home. But, you know, suffice to say, I think there's more communication. I think there's a lot more honesty um, and a need to clear up some fundamental, almost what seems like juvenile errors. And when I say juvenile errors, I'm not talking about like your youth, that you're young or immature. But I think 
when the relationships came together in the first place, there might have been, it might have been based on some incorrect assumptions. And so I really see that this is a time to, this season ahead is a time to really clear up misunderstandings in quite a brave and courageous way. Um, and do it in small chunks. Don't do it in a massive, long, like killer weekend. That would, that would kill the passion. Everything has to be in little, bouts of honesty and little bouts of intimacy, intimate sharing. Um, so I, I see that as all being very, very good. Um, in terms of money, I've already mentioned you're coming into a new way of valuing yourself, but, um, I really see that, um, you're actually quite being, you're being quite determined in terms of work, finding a lot of energy going into the work and how you do it. And there's a lot of vitality, a lot of determination, um, I think in the last year or so, there's been a little bit of pain around um, what value you bring the world uh, or how the world seems to value your skills. And right now it feels like you've got the um, wind beneath your wings. You're like really going for it. Um, it feels like you've got um, a, a clearer, I was going to say clear, but you're a Pisces. So <laughs> um, it's more likely that you've got a clearer direction. Um uh, and when I said that about Pisces, please um, forgive me. I'm not trying to imply that you are super changeable necessarily, but you know, you've got Saturn and Neptune going through your sign at the same time, which is creating a bit of um, a bit of a duality in the way you're thinking right now, more so than ever. So yeah, I do think that right now in this season ahead, you've got more determination and you feel like you've got a direction, which is good enough for now. It might not be your final destination and direction, but it's your direction right now. So allow that to plow you on. In terms of your home, again, it's about communication. So love and home and communication are all synonymous. Um, to me, it just feels like all entertaining at home or loving at home um, goes really smoothly. I think lovers get their best out of you in the home situation. Um, so yeah, I see it's all there. Um, and also that you might be socializing quite a lot at home and bringing a lot of the fun home. Um, and the more you do it, the more it's enhancing your connection. So that's all wonderful. Last thing then Pisces is in terms of your health. And really what I'm seeing there is that it's absolutely vital that you have fun um, and in particular get creative. One of the things that I notice is often when we've got dis-ease, um, it's, it, you know, like we're grieving something and there's some kind of change that's, that's occurred that we've not quite caught up with and it gets like stuck in our body. And so I really see the way we move or connect or um, make sense of it. it. The more creative we are with it, the easier it it flows and moves through you. So I really do see that in this season ahead, the most beneficial thing you could do to change your health outcome is to be completely creative in your approach to life and in your approach to your body. So, you know, if you feel like there's something you want to write about, write, you know, write that book, write that song, write that joke, whatever it is, you know, whatever's going on inside, let it out. And, and I think that's going to be marvelous. Last thing then as well is that just the energy of, um, um, Venus and Mars and, um, the moon together are really rebalancing that sense of generosity with vitality and emotions. Don't be afraid to let all of them come together. As they come together, you will feel like you come together. So there you go. That's my hot tips for the season ahead. Thanks so much, Pisces. Wow. This has been quite an exhausting um, broadcast. <laughs> Um, but I'm so pleased I've done it and I hope it's really helpful in understanding the energy um, for the season ahead, what's there for us, um, what we might consider doing differently, how it might relate to the overall dynamic of the world. Um, I really do, like I said right at the start, I really do think we're going into a new place of responsibility and I also think we are starting to speak. You know, our voices are coming out. And I do think there are some unspeakable things that we might hear about, which is a little bit, you know, there's there's lots of things going on. Um, I do think this is a time when we can impact our health. Um, and the more we innocently speak from our truth and also recognize that we're all each other's brother um, and that, um, you know, when... 
like, I guess, you know, to put it into context, I was talking to one of my clients today and they were sharing something from the course in miracles um, that they, they absolutely adore. And there was, um, there was a passage that um, my client shared with me and it just reminded me of something. And um, the, yeah, it was talking about seeing everyone else as yourself. And I realized that in recent times, we've all um, been pitted against each other somewhat. Um, and we've all gone into these like reels of judgment, you know, and, um, and one of the things I know from my training as a hypnotherapist um, and, um, and as an NLP coach is that what we say, our mind, uh, our unconscious, just mind takes on as if it's true. So, you know, it, it has no choice but to act on what we're saying. Everything we say is logged by our unconscious mind. And that's true for our thoughts. It's always listening. Our unconscious mind is always listening. And if you, over this kind of last kind of phenomenon period, if you've been judging other people or, or noticing other people and saying, oh, ill, ill, they're sick. Oh, they look like they've aged. Oh, look at them. They've lost their hair or, oh my goodness, there's 101 different judgments you might have about people. Look at that belly. Whoa, they've been eating too many bagels. Whatever you are judging in other people, um, you know, like when you use that sort of idea that seeing everyone else as yourself, if you're judging other people and saying getting older, what your body hears isn't that they're getting older. They hear getting older. And so the unconscious mind starts getting older for you. It starts doing what you're saying to yourself. And so one of the things I really see as, as a huge potential for this new season is that we get in control of our thinking a little bit. We realize that we are the deliberate creators of our lives. And I don't think we've been in that position for a long time. I think we've come out of that position. We kind of gave it up. We said, oh, here, look after us. We need you. Please look after us. Now we're starting to realize, I think, that um, when you give your power away, um, you have no control. When you give your power away, other people get a say in how they do it. And they might not do it for your best interest. And the chances are, if you put your life in somebody else's hands, they're going to do it to their best interests. And you're lucky, you know, you might be lucky that they might consider you too, but it's impossible to put somebody else before you completely. You know, we, we are these, we, we have egos. We have, we have a personal set point. We have a personal place. You know, it's, it's, it's impossible to put someone completely before you. We can try and we can absolutely do our best and be sort of convincing that we're doing it. But yeah, what I really, that's my biggest learning in terms of this season ahead. And that is absolutely watch your thoughts for the judgments you're having on other people, because that is going to be the thing that absolutely sickens you the most. So I see humanity coming back together, us working together, fully taking responsibility and it's absolutely beautiful so thank you once again for joining me today i absolutely love love the fact that you've joined me and um if you haven't subscribed and you like this please do but remember if you want to go into the deeper conversation that i spoke about then please do watch that extra session on my channel um the the extra channel the community the school space and the link is below. So anyway, lots of love to you. Enjoy the solstice and um, have a fantastic season ahead. Lots of love. Bye for now. Mm.